I'd like to call to order the regular meeting of the Naperville Park District Board of Commissioners. Today is February 14th at 7 p.m. I'll rise if you're able for the Pledge of Allegiance. Jackie, take the roll. Commissioner Egan? Here. Commissioner Heidi? Here. Commissioner Ori? Here. Commissioner Riley? Here. Commissioner Todd? Here. Vice President Janner? Here. President Young? Here. The next item on the agenda are awards and recognitions. President Davis, Brett Davis from the Pederma, and Jennifer Herman from our safety team. Ten. So I'm here tonight to, uh, uh, to pr excuse me, to award the uh, accreditation program, uh, the uh, accreditation of plaque for the loss control review program. So the loss control review program is a comprehensive review of the agency's operations from, a, from an entire risk management standpoint. Property, liability, workers' compensation, employee practices. We look at, we have a staff person assigned to the agency that comes out does some field work, interacts with the staff, does field observations, reviews your policies, procedures, kind of a, a, a top to bottom uh, review. And the park district scored very well, 98.6%, and, and that's outstanding. And so you receive the accreditation process, or accreditation award. This means that you scored an average of 95% for two review periods in a row, 2008 as well as 2012 review process. And the, uh, along with the, accreditation plaque, we also received a $1,500 cash award. Hopefully all of you got a, an, some incentive wear that the uh, staff, the full-time staff and the commissioners received. So this is really our highest honor and I'm, I'm very pleased and thank you for your, uh, your risk management efforts. I'm actually a Naperville resident as well, so I appreciate all the efforts that you do. So congratulations to Jennifer and to, to the staff. And we appreciate all of your efforts. Thank you. Very thank you. Thank you. At this time, uh, we'll hear matters from the public. Jackie, has anyone signed up to speak this evening? Okay. Moving on to updates and reports. We will start with the Riverwalk Commission update. Commissioner Heidi. Thank you, President Young. Uh, nothing to report tonight. Details to follow. Moving right along to the Finance Committee update. Commissioner Riley. Thank you, President Young. Uh, on the Finance Committee met on uh, January 18th. Uh, Director uh, Stanish provided a timeline for the upcoming uh, limited park bond issue as, as follows. Uh, schedule was laid out January 24th would be the uh, Moody's rating review. January 30th, the district's financial advisor, Eric Anderson, BMO Capital Markets, provide information on the issue during the board workshop, which he did. And February 14th, uh, this evening, we have uh, a, an agenda item to approve the bond ordinance on our agenda. Uh, then uh, staff presented an overview of the three-year plan assumptions that will be used to generate the district's three-year financial plan 2013 to 2015. Revenue and expenditure assumptions were highlighted, which included funds needed to operate new facilities and parks, such as Knock Knowles Nature Center and Southwest Community Park. The next steps then were to present the, uh, the three-year plan assumptions to the Golf Committee and then to the full board at the January 30th meeting. The, uh, those did take place. The Finance Committee will meet next on Friday, uh, February 22nd at uh, 2.30, or excuse me, 2 o'clock in the Administration Building. Thank you. 
The next item is the Legislative Committee update. Commissioner Heidi. Thank you, President Young. The committee met on January 14th and we discussed several items. First, uh, HR Director Katie Seppi provided a review of the impact that the Affordable Care Act could potentially have on the Park District. As it turns out, the impact is less than we originally estimated because the number of eligible employees is far less than originally anticipated. We also discussed current and pending legislation that could affect Illinois Park Districts, and House Bill 1948 was identified as potentially harmful to the Naperville Park District. The bill mandates the identification with respect to location of surveillance cameras. The Park District plans to expand the use of these cameras, and we feel that the bill would obviate their benefits. We are working with Senator Conley to draft language to address this legislation. Last, we reviewed our legislative meet and greet and discussed several methods to improve turnout. Thank you. The next item is the Parks and Recreation Committee update. Commissioner Todd. Uh, the Parks and Rec Committee met February 11th. The committee went on a field trip to, to uh, both Hinsdale and Glen Ellen in order to explore platform tennis facilities there. Uh, the intent was to gather information and we got a lot of great information and we're gonna review that at, at some uh, further upcoming meetings. And then the uh, next meeting for Parks and Rec is gonna be February 20th. And the Golf Committee update, Commissioner Todd. And I'm also giving that one. Golf Committee met uh, January 21st at Springbrook Golf Course. The committee reviewed the final re revenues and expenses for December and for the year. The December revenues were positive and the totals for 2012 resulted in a better than expected outcome. We're actually in the black, about $100,000 for 2012 in the golf fund. Um, simulator usage at, um, has been a little slow during the week, but it's been heavy on weekends and that's good. If anybody's interested in trying it out, call the pro shop at Springbrook. The committee also reviewed the three-year plan, which the board reviewed at our last workshop. There will be no fee increase for the 2013 season. The committee also reviewed our fee structure in relation to our competitors, and we're very well positioned in relation to comparable courses, and we're gonna continue to monitor this item um, further in the year. The committee also had a discussion on the upcoming capital projects for golf and the need to improve the food and beverage options in order to better leverage that revenue stream at the golf courses. Uh, marketing reported to the committee that there were 177 responses to the end of year golf survey. Staff is reviewing the results and the committee will review it in an upcoming meeting. Um, finally, the website redesign is in progress. Um, this is to roll out um, the new website at the beginning of the golf season targeted for mid-March. And then the next meeting for the golf committee will be February 25th at 7.30 a.m. at Springbrook. The next item is the president's update. Last week, I presented the State of the Park District address to interested residents. I reviewed the key accomplishments of 2012 and our plans for 2013. You've heard me say before that each of our goals are driven by our core values. Through our master plan, you can see how our initiatives align with each of our core values. One of those core values is public safety. In the master plan, we align two initiatives with public safety, the cleanup efforts at Sportsman's Park and finding a location for programming that is currently located at the barn and constructing a new maintenance facility at Knock Park. You may be also aware that the Park District, the City of Naperville, and the school districts are collaborating on safety measures in light of the Sandy Hook tragedy. Well, this evening, I wanted to share with you, the board and, and the residents, two other initiatives that staff has implemented to help increase the safety of our employees. Because our staff works, works where our residents play, these initiatives can impact public safety, but also contribute, contribute to reducing our overall expenses. Jennifer Herman and the Safety Committee designed two safety incentive programs that I wanted to tell you about. The Safety Star program is geared toward recognizing and rewarding employees for their safety conscious actions and efforts. Employees are encouraged to nominate coworkers who exhibit a safety conscious action or effort that deserves recognition. Each nominee will be publicly recognized with a completed Safety Star nomination card displayed at their facility and through a monthly e-blast. There will also be a drawing quarterly to win a $25 gift card. 
The second program is the Safety Grant Program, which encourages employees to work collaboratively within their departments to identify ideas, products, procedures, or training methods that, are, that will reduce risk or improve safety, or both. Employees can submit a safety suggestion and their department would be awarded the dollars to implement that, could be awarded the dollars to implement that suggestion. So I wanted to especially thank Jennifer and the safety committee for their creative approach to safety and I look forward to learning of their ideas that the employees bring forward. Thank you. Executive Director McGurry. Thank you. Just a few things here. Door-to-door uh, -door delivery of the Naperville Park District Spring Program Guide and Summer Camps Guide began today. The delivery process will continu continue through the weekend, so if you haven't yet received your guide, it will be coming soon. In the meantime, you may also visit naprivilleparks.org to view virtual versions of these publications. Online uh, resident registration for t-ball, coach pitch, and machine pitch baseball programs will begin at, at noon on Wednesday, February 27th. Online resident registration for spring programs and summer camps will begin at noon on Thursday, February 28th. Talk a little bit about golf here. Create your own golf foursome and be part of our 2013 season reserve tee time program. Applications to be entered into the, uh, into the lottery to reserve a tee time are due February 18th. The lottery will be held on February 24th. Again, visit springbrookgolfcourse.org or naperbrookgolfcourse.org for more information on the season reserved tea time programs. <clears throat> and then finally, as uh, many of us in this room, and I'm sure those watching tonight, uh, experienced sometimes technology is a great thing. Um, however, sometimes it's not such a great thing. And issues occur that have uh, an adverse impact. This was the case with the Naperville Youth Soccer Spring Registration Process that took place last November. An influx of simultaneous registration requests were being taken online and the system simply could not handle that capacity. This occurrence led to uh, staff exploring ways to ensure that this incident would not be repeated again. As a result, the district had deci has decided to implement a separate uh, registration process for both boys and girls soccer in order to reduce the number of simultaneous online registrations. This change will take place with uh, fall 2013 soccer registration uh, that will occur sometime in late May, uh, I'm sorry, late a April, early May. And just as a side note, um, staff put a lot of time into this effort. Um, we did a uh, survey. I think we got back just close to 300 responses, which is phenomenal response rate when you ask somebody to fill something out online. And uh, we looked at this, and sometimes the easy way to fix things is to simply go out and spend a bunch of money on technology to advance that effort. And we looked at it a different way and thought, let's not spend all this money on technology, although sometimes it's good to do that. Um, there might be an easier fix, and we think this is a great fix, and I believe 99% of the people that responded favor um, splitting this up. So we look forward to the change, and um, again, technology is what it is. It's a wonderful thing, but uh, some days it's not such a wonderful thing, and on that day, it was a horrible thing for the Naperville Park District, but uh, we got through it, and we've learned from it, so thank you. All right, the next item is approval of the treasurer's report. Move to approve the December 2012 treasurer's report. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? Jackie, take the roll. Vice President Janner? Yes. Commissioner Riley? Yes. Commissioner Egan? Yes. Commissioner Heidi? Yes. Commissioner Ori? Aye. President Young? Yes. How about Commissioner Todd? And Commissioner Todd? Yes. The next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. Are there any items to be removed from the consent agenda? Okay. Move to accept consent agenda items A through P. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? We'll do that here. So where were we? Any discussion on the motion? Okay, Jackie, take the roll. <laughs> Vice President Janner? Yes. Commissioner Riley? Yes. Commissioner Egan? Yes. Commissioner Heidi? Yes. Commissioner Ori? Aye. Commissioner Todd? Yes. <laughs> President Young? Yes. Move to approve consent agenda as accepted. Second. There's a motion and a second. This is a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 
Uh, moving on to unfinished business, old business. Motion to approve ordinance 803, providing for this issue of general obligation limited tax park bonds series 2013 of the district for the purpose of providing for the payment of land for parks for the building, maintaining, improving, and protecting of the same and the existing land and facilities for said park district and for the payment of the expenses incident thereto and providing for the levy of a direct annual tax to pay the principal and interest on said bonds. Second. Sue, Director Stanish, could you share with us some of the benefits of doing this at this time? Sure, can everyone hear me? Okay, great. Um, so with us this evening um, is Eric Anderson from BMO Capital Markets. So as I go through just a little preview on our bonds, if you have any questions for Eric or I, just jump in. And as we go through some of the um, results of the bond sale, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, so the ordinance before you this evening anticipates um, the district generating about $2.3 million in bond proceeds uh, that'll be used to fund our capital plan. Uh, for 2013, we plan on spending the whole issue. Um, most likely, it will all go for the Knock Knowles Nature Center and possibly Knock Park or some of our other improvements, depending on the time of those um, expenditures that we have. Um, the bond issue is a three-year issue, and we did that. Um, there's reasons for a three-year issue. Uh, the first one is it aligns very nicely with the district's 10-year capital plan. Um, with projects that we have coming up in the next three years, a three-year term, and then we can pay those bonds off really made sense to us. Um, secondly, what we don't want to be doing in this environment, especially with the low interest rates and the cost and the fees to issue debt, is to be issuing small amounts of debt each year. So a three-year issue um, made sense to us, and we plan um, on not going into the bond market for the next two years. Having said that, we may be coming to you in about a year or so to talk about some refunding bonds. Um, that's different, though. It's not new money. That's just refunding outstanding debt that we have that would save um, principal and interest costs going forward. And I think Eric had mentioned that at our last uh, board meeting, that he's keeping an eye on two issues, uh, one for the district and one for golf, um, for those refunding opportunities. So another reason um, to look at debt now, we know interest rates have been at historically low levels. I think we hit the date of this timing. Eric, you can jump in any time about this. Um, our effective rate for a three-year bond issue is, is a half a percent, actually 0.51 percent. Um, unheard of in my experience. I can't remember a time um, when interest rates were that low. So the cost to borrow money, um, extremely attractive. Uh, 2011, where we were, we were about 3.1 percent. So in a couple years, it's really made a difference. So these bonds, um, as we all know and we talk about, are just one part of our capital plan. And we know we have a very strong capital plan at the district with diverse funding sources. So you have money coming in um, from property taxes. Uh, we work as hard as we can to get money in for grants to fund our project. And then we have bond proceeds. So you have this mix of new money coming in. And the last, the third part of that is the amount that we have in reserves. So reserves are important um, for us for a couple different reasons. We have reserves set aside in our capital plan. We also have operating reserves set aside. Both of those, and they're both integrated on how we operate overall, are very important to maintaining our AAA bond rating. So another reason that we've, we issue new money instead of spending down reserves at times is to keep those reserve balances in check and also to reinforce our bond rating, which as we all know, I'm happy to report that we've been um, rated by Moody's again with this issue for AAA bond rating, not only for this issue, but also for all of our outstanding issues. So that's a really big accomplishment. I know in 2008, the district spent a lot of time and worked really hard in 2008 to get that AAA rating. So it's one of our strategic goals. It's something we all think about and also how we manage, how you manage the district and give us policy centers around keeping that, that AAA rating um, for us. So another um, big advantage that we talked about for the past several months at our, at our uh, meetings is uh, we, have, we have a lot in reserves right now in capital because of our need for indoor space and we had um, a project that fell apart last year. Um, we still have the issue of indoor space. 
So having money in reserves for us um, to address that need and any unexpected um, kind of things that are out there that we know a little bit about but we don't know the complete impact um, is going to give us the flexibility in the upcoming year to fund our over $10 million capital plan for various um, projects planned throughout the district. The new and the new bond money will go for that. We will be able to keep sufficient funds in reserve um, to maintain that AAA bond rating and to give you flexibility for some of the known unknowns that we have coming up and that can hit us in the next year. So all of those factors coupled together uh, really made sense uh, for us to issue these bonds now. And I'm going to pass it over to Dirk real quick to talk about um, the legislative risk that is um, unknown maybe, but we think is, is pretty important um, what could be facing us. We plan our capital at the Naperville Park District. Uh, you've worked um, at projects uh, 10 years out. That's what you've charged staff to do. Uh, and we look at that as well uh, in terms of uh, the legislation and what it's done. Again, this year already, the new bills have just been recently introduced down in Springfield. And for the uh, fourth year in a row, um, and this is how things work in Springfield, baby steps, there is yet another bill um, to take away your present powers with respect to fund financing, levying, and taxing. Um, PTEL is very complex, fund accounting is very complex, um, and when you change only one part of it, you change it forever in some respects. Uh, so Representative Franks has once again introduced a bill um, discussing what it means to have declining EAV, and his bill, um, which has traction every year, um, would essentially mean you're not allowed to charge um, what the tax cap allows now, which is the cost of living or 5%, whichever is less. The issue with that, in short, is that it says in a, in a situation where there's declining EAV, even though inflation may be at 4% and your biggest cost, your people, which is about 80 to 90% of budget, are facing real life 4% cost of living increases, you're not going to have the money to pay them an increase in the wage because you can't levy for that increase. In fact, you would have to eat into your reserves. Uh, to do it. Um, and it's a double whammy in the sense that appraisal of property for purposes of the equalized assessed valuation is behind. Only about a third of the district's real estate that's in its EAV gets appraised in any given year. So it's a three-year cycle to catch up on declining values. So even though reports are the economy, real estate values in Naperville is stabilized and may be increasing, it'll be three years before you see that. Representative Frank's bill passes, it means for the next three years, despite the fact that there, like last year, was a 3.5% cost of living increase that your employees are facing, you can't levy for an additional penny under that kind of legislation. So the question is, um, are we going to mess with that? That's one bill he's introduced. He's also on another bill that would require almost every bond issue to go to backdoor referendum, making the hurdles required to um, send something out much lower, and then making it even easier at referendum to defeat it, such that uh, a referendum would require a super majority or a two-thirds approval in order to issue any debt in the future. And so while you've planned for a 10-year capital program, and while we have certain, to quote Donald Rumsfeld, known unknowns with respect to indoor space in the park district that um, we have been discussing with the, you know, the imminent loss of the barn, because um, it's just no longer ADA accessible uh, and we haven't crystallized around a particular solution, your ability to finance those things, even though you're looking out and planning five and ten years in the future, may be dramatically different the end of this year. And so given those risks and given the in incredible um, inexpensive cost of this money, that was uh, one of the factors put into staff's recommendation. May I uh, ask a question, Sue? Yes. How will the new issue affect our levy over the last over the next three years? So the new issue will um, will be keeping at level debt service, but we will be using our extension base. What's left over the next three years? So the levy um, levy amount 
uh, will take into account um, this 1.7 percent increase in CPI for this year, and then an estimated one and a half going forward. So, uh, but we will have level debt service going forward. Commissioner Egan. Thank you. Um, what, what are we getting on our interest rate for our savings accounts now? 37 basis points. So we're at an effective yield of 0.51%, 0.14% we're wasting because we don't need the money today. I won't be supporting this consistent with my budget vote. I understand what you're doing. We can issue this money inside of 30 days with having another hearing. If something that presented itself that we needed a couple million bucks for the barn, we could have the money in 30 days. Looking at these yields from 0.3 to 0.6, we're seeing a relatively flat yield curve. I don't see anything in the risk and what the Fed just came out with. They're not going to be raising rates quickly at any point in time. If the state can get something done in less than 30 days before we can react to it, God bless them, but I don't see that happening either. So with, with that said, I'm going to stay consistent with my vote and I will not be supporting uh, these bonds. Thank you. Commissioner Ori. Uh, I will be supporting the, this bond issuance because I think this is uh, really fiscal planning ahead uh, uh, on our part. One, I, I don't know if you mentioned it, Sue. We, we've got a report in here on cash in lieu of, and that uh, has been a tremendous help to the Park District over the past uh, 35 or 40 years. But that uh, comes from development, and since development is pretty well built out, uh, that uh, source of revenue will, will be declining in the, in the immediate future, I'm sure. So that's uh, uh, of concern, too, on ensuring that we have sufficient funds in order for us to be able to do our capital plan. On the capital plan, uh, were there, in addition to the, uh, I think, the central maintenance facility that we, uh, are there any other big ticket items that uh, are worthy of mention? Eric Schutz might uh, have that knowledge. Well, I mentioned as a planned project, the Knock Knowles Nature Center, we already have the, close to $3 million programmed into the 2013 capital plan for that, uh, for the completion of that project. Also, Southwest Community Park is, you know, probably the, the, the last major, major development we will be doing uh, as sports complexes go. That's 35 plus acres, someone in that area, Eric, if I remember right. These are, these are the probably multi-million dollar projects that uh, are on the horizon as well as uh, ongoing playground replacement and so forth that are probably less but still add up uh, to a couple of three million dollars every year so this is this is a wise thing to do and it's the right time to do it so I'll, I'll be supporting it any more discussion Jackie take the roll vice president Janner yes commissioner Todd yes Commissioner Egan? No. Nope. Commissioner Heidi? Yes. Commissioner Ori? Aye. Commissioner Riley? Yes. President Young? Yes. Okay, moving on to future meetings. All of the, f the next three future meetings will be on Thursdays. The regular meeting uh, will occur February 28th at 6 p.m. at the South Maintenance Facility. The second one is at March 14th here in Council Chambers at 7 p.m. And the third is March 28th, again at 6 p.m. at the South Maintenance Facility. Move to adjourn to executive session to discuss land acquisition 2C5 of the Open Meetings Act. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? Jackie, take the roll. Vice President Janner? Yes. Commissioner Ori? Aye. Commissioner Egan? Yes. Commissioner Heidi? Yes. Commissioner Riley? Yes. Commissioner Todd? Yes. President Young? Yes.